So next in our introduction to R, let's talk about program editors. Program editors, editors are an essential tool for using R when you have a long set of R code that you need to run, um, likely all at once, and you don't want to have to type every single line uh, one at a time in the R console window. So what one could do is, let's say, open up Word, or let's say maybe even Notepad, and simply type all the lines of code uh, that you would normally type at the R console, and then just copy and paste them from Word or Notepad into the console window. Uh, that's not a very efficient way of, 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 do, of using R. So instead, what we're going to talk about is three different uh, program editors that will make your life simpler. So the first one's actually built into R itself. Um, and let me go ahead and pull up R here. Um, to open up the program editor, go File, New Script. Uh, for some reason, some people like to call programs or sets of code in R scripts rather than programs. Um, I think most, um, most people call them programs, but some people call them scripts. So File, New Script. And here now you have a program editor where you can uh, simply uh, type code. So similar to what we saw before, where let's say I uh, combine together one, two, three, four, five, put that into an object called X, and then find the standard deviation of X. I can just simply now highlight that set of code and come over here to edit, uh, run line or selection, and notice how that's automatically transferred into my uh, R console window. Uh, to execute the code. If I want to actually, let's say, save then this set of lines of code, I can come over here to File, Save. It's going to be saved as a .r file. I can then open up a previous program that I've uh, created before by clicking File, Open Script. So it's pretty basic. Uh, now, uh, this program editor can work. I've had some students use this program editor for the entire class that I've taught, but most students do not. And the reason being is because there are better program editors out there. And so we're going to talk about two of these. Uh, so now we're on page two of the notes. So the first one that we're going to talk about is RStudio. By far, this is the program editor that is used the most by students and even people outside of academics who use R. Uh, the official name is R uh, is, is called R Studio Desktop, uh, but uh, most people just simply call R Studio for short. R Studio itself, that name is associated with the corresponding company that produces the R Studio Desktop. Um, R Studio Desktop is free. Uh, uh, it's available for free, um, uh, and you can download it from this particular website that I have given there. There are also commercial versions available, too, that you would have to pay for, but the free version will be just fine for what we're going to do. Uh, I think it is, though, important to mention uh, that our studio has essentially uh, become the dominant way that people use R. Because of that, new R users sometimes think that R is R Studio and vice versa. Uh, but that is, not that is not the case at all. R Studio is a for-profit company uh, that produces this R Studio editor um, that they allow people to use for free in the hopes that uh, eventually those people will buy other things from R Studio. Um, uh, this the, the use of R Studio Desktop has become so dominant that this has actually um, um, uh, made some people worried about uh, R Studio's dominance, similar to let's say in other areas of, of business where a particular company has essentially a monopoly. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I won't get into all the details behind that though. Uh, I don't use R Studio. Um, I use uh, the, the second program editor that I'm going to talk about shortly, but I do want to spend some time here, at least at the beginning of our class, talking about RStudio. 
Okay. So when we open up, so you download it, you install it on your computer. It's available on all operating systems uh, that you would like. Um, and uh, so you install it on your computer. And when you install it, then you're going to get um, and, and open it. You're going to get something that looks like this. This top window here is where you can actually type your code. So I can take type X gets. Um, I'm going to combine together one, two, three, four, five. Excuse me. Um, oops, didn't quite type that. Uh, and I can type uh, also SDX as well. Uh, notice how it has some, um, it automatically recognizes that I have a function and automatically will complete the parentheses for me. Now, down below here is the R console window. And so, essentially, what the R Studio company has done is just simply taken this free R software product. Um, and integrated it into our studio itself. Um, that's how they do it. And so if I want to run some code here, I can just highlight it, come, come over here to run, and it transfers it to the R console. Now notice what happened here and over here in the right. Uh, we have uh, basically a list of all objects that we've created. Uh, down below here, we have some nice windows available to us, such as help. So if you remember in a previous video, taking a look at uh, the help for packages, and here you have a list of all your packages that you have available to you. Um, you can also look at the packages too. Eventually at some point where you might actually create plots, we have a plots tab, and the plots unfortunately will actually be uh, put into uh, this window. We'll talk about other ways to create a separate window outside of our studio uh, that you can use to uh, for your plot to go to, this actually can be um, create a better looking graphics, at least initially, sometimes. Uh, some other stuff uh, about R Studio. Let me take a look at my notes over here. So remember, we used an example involving the pnorm function. Now look what happens as I'm typing pnorm here. R, I'm sorry, R Studio is going to try to guess what function I am going to type. And then it provides some help about the corresponding syntax that needs to be used. So especially for beginners, this can be quite nice. Let's see. If I want to uh, save um, uh, my, my code up here, I can go File, uh, Save. Again, it saves it as a .r file. And by the way, .r files are just plain ASCII text, so you can open them up simply in Notepad and see the corresponding code. Uh, you'll also notice here that there is a um, a, a color um, highlighting corresponding to code, uh, so uh, that can be nice to read one's code a lot easier uh, than uh, if there wasn't this syntax highlighting. Unfortunately, the program editor that's built into R does not have syntax highlighting. So that's another reason why I recommend not using it. Um, and there's a lot of other options that you can uh, work with to customize what your program editor looks like and stuff. You can explore uh, those on your own. Okay, so the next program editor that we're going to look at is something called Tin R. Tin stands for This Is Not Notepad. Um, it was uh, the, the development of Tin R started a number of years before R Studio did, which was in 2010. Tin R started probably about 2003, 2005. There were a number of other program editors available before R Studio. Many, many of them are no longer developed, uh, but Tin R has been continued to be developed. So let me go ahead and get into Tin R here, or just call it Tin for short. Um, and typically when you open up TIN, you're going to come to a blank window such as this. And this is where you can type uh, your code. So just some code that we've seen before. And I'm going to actually now uh, uh, save it as an actual program. Uh, sometimes you need to do that to get full syntax highlighting. And in order to now use... Um, uh, uh, to, to, to use 10R with R itself, you need to actually open up R. 
And the way to do that is you come over here to the R icon on this toolbar, and that's going to open it up. Fortunately, it's actually being opened up in a different window right now, or I'm sorry, a different monitor. Let me go ahead and pull it over here. And this is what it looks like when it's actually open. Let me move some stuff there. And also let me make this a little bit bigger as well. Hold on. So I'm just going to increase the font size. There we go. Okay. So now in order to transfer this code that we see in the tin R editor, uh, transfer it over to R. I can just simply highlight the code and hit the corresponding button up here and actually automatically is transferred, similar to what we saw with our studio. Uh, let me see my notes here to make sure I'm talking about everything that I want to. So here is actually a program that I've written that contains all the code that we saw um, in a previous video. And so if you remember, for example, when we did 2 plus 2 or P norm 1.96 and so on. And um, so you can see here's all the code. And you can see the nice syntax highlighting that uh, tin uh, R has. This is not actually the default. I've actually went into some of the options for tin R to make things pop out better in terms of the, um, make sure the, the letters are more distinct. Um, in my notes, I give um, some guidance about how to actually do that. So again, I can come over here to tin R, highlight a segment of code, come up here to send uh, to the R console window, and boom, there it goes. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite easy to use. Uh, let's see here. Now, if you notice here, here's my R window. This is a little bit different from what we saw previously for an R window. And basically what Tin R does is simply just opens up the R console alone. Um, so that's just how it operates. That's why it just looks different. Uh, that's explained actually on page six. I get, get into, uh, or actually page five and page six of my notes where I get into more of the details behind it. Um, let's see here. Now there's a number of other things in the notes here. I do want you to read if you choose to use TIN. Um, and I do want to mention one that can be frustrating to, to students. So if you notice when I highlighted some code here, um, the R console window came up and this was the focus of what my screen was. Uh, by default, though, R works so that um, the focus returns actually to the program editor itself. So by default, this is how it will operate. So notice we saw some stuff go to R console, then immediately we came back to the program editor. Not sure why that would be the default, but it is. To change that, there's a little icon up here which talks about options, return focus, do I want in the editor or do I want to have it in the R console? And so if I just click on that and now run the code, it will run exactly like what we did uh, earlier. Now, um, uh, people who use Tin R uh, will often use it in a multiple monitor environment. So maybe, for example, you could have the editor in one window and, I'm sorry, in one monitor and have the R console window in another monitor. Or in other words, maybe just rearrange your screen nicely so that you can see both simultaneously. Um, um, and that, that can be helpful as well if you just have like a single monitor. Okay, let me get back into my notes here. Okay. So what about other editors? Um, uh, some people have started using another editor called Jupyter Notebook. Um, this is convenient, especially for Linux users, because it's made for Linux. Uh, for Windows view, uh, users, though, uh, typically the way that you need to use some, this thing called Jupyter Notebook is to have access to some kind of central server that has a Linux operating system on it. Uh, in other words, um, uh, from your Windows computer, connect to that, that Linux server. Um, many universities, including our own, 
uh, have it set up so that you can actually use Jupyter Notebook through their supercomputers uh, via a web browser. Now, uh, I won't get into what a notebook environment is. I think it's an inferior environment to using R the way that we've just done here. So that's why I don't focus on it. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about it, though, I've actually <clears throat> had like a 30 minute lecture on it in another class. And if you contact me, I can point you to that um, that that lecture. Um, and also there are other editors still out there, for example, uh, that people use with R, such as Emacs Speaks Statistics. So anyway, so that's the end of then this introduction to program editors.